Welcome to Keep the Faith Ministry News. Quote, It was a tsunami from the hills. It was bigger than the tides. The noise, it was like hookah falls. Ricky Reed gazes at the wall for a moment, and you get the impression he can still hear the sound of water flooding into Elsk Valley. His five-year-old son, Parker, sits nearby, quietly playing. Reed was part of a nighttime road crew that came in to help when Cyclone Gabriel struck, blocking off parts of the state highway where huge trees had fallen. At around midnight, as water started rising fast, they began evacuating people. But then he realized that the truck he was in was stranded. There were waves over the highway. The rapids were on both sides, he says. He saw the road itself start to ripple as the water forced its way underneath the asphalt. Sitting in the marooned truck, he took a moment to write a message into his iPhone Notes app, farewelling Parker. As the truck filled with water, he climbed out into the branches of a nearby tree. Water roared through the valley. The first tree snapped in half, but Reed grabbed onto another. He clung to that trunk for hours, up to his neck in water, knowing if he climbed any higher, the trunk might be too thin to bear his weight and he would be carried away. Quote, I just held on there all night thinking about him, his smile, he says quietly, nodding toward Parker. Reed's home was flooded and he doesn't yet know when he can return or what its future will be. As a worker on drainage infrastructure and catchments, he has thought about the valley's vulnerability to flooding and the changes that might be needed to protect it. Quote, we definitely have to rethink. If you look at the way the valley shaped, that's where water has been. So it's not the first time. Then again, he says, I don't want to leave. It's my home. Once I can get back here, I'll get back out there. That combination, the keen desire to preserve a home and awareness that some of those homes are critically vulnerable to future floods is now in the minds of tens of thousands of New Zealanders and a government that faces extremely tough questions in the coming weeks. Reed is one of hundreds of thousands of New Zealanders who lives in a region at ongoing risk from flooding and extreme weather events. As people begin to dig their houses from the silt and assess the damage, the country faces looming questions about where and how to rebuild, and whether it even should, with the knowledge of a climate crisis that will bring more storms, flooding and extreme weather in the years to come. We need to adjust our societies. Quote, There are difficult conversations ahead for New Zealand about exactly where we all live. Finance Minister Grant Robertson said on Sunday, shortly after walking through the remains of a ruined power station, and the infrastructure that's required to get us to and from all of that. As the climate heats, scientists agree that extreme weather events, including flooding and cyclones, will happen more frequently and with greater intensity. According to the government's National Adaptation Plan, one in seven New Zealanders, or 675,000 people, live in areas prone to flooding, and another 72,065 live in areas projected to be subject to extreme sea level rise. Some of those areas can be protected by extensive mitigation measures, seawalls, stop banks, stilts, early warning systems for flooding. In others, however, those measures will be cripplingly expensive or simply impossible, leaving an intolerable risk to the lives of any who live there. Quote, if those communities go back and rebuild today, are we responsible for letting them do that? Robertson said in a television interview on Sunday, two words New Zealanders are going to get used to hearing over the next few years are managed retreat. Some of those calls need to be made extremely quickly, says Professor Elin Noy, Chair of the Economics of Disasters 
and Climate Change at Victoria University before people start to repair and rebuild. Quote, As painful as it is, it's much less painful in this kind of situation where your house has already been destroyed to be told, we think it's not viable for you to remain there, he says. It's less painful to do that than to take someone who has a beautiful house and no damage to tell them, you know what, the science is suggesting that this is no longer safe. New Zealand's government has forced communities to retreat from natural hazards before. After Christchurch's earthquake, about 8,000 houses were red zoned. The land they were built on designated too unstable to ever sustain residential development. The government bought out the land, converting much of it into public parks. Noy says that this could offer a kind of model to the response to Cyclone Gabriel. Quote, it's painful to ask people to leave, especially from areas that potentially they've lived in for a very long time, maybe generations, Noy says. But we live in a world which is changing. We cannot ignore the fact that the climate is changing and we need to adjust our societies to those changes. On Monday afternoon, the government announced an initial $250 million for emergency repairs to the road network and $50 million for immediate business support. Robertson stressed that both figures were only for initial emergency work and the government would be making rolling assessments and new financial commitments. He expected the cost to be in the billions. Quote, This is only the beginning. There is a massive program of work required, Robertson said. Quote, While appearing to the children of men as a great physician who can heal all their maladies, he will bring disease and disaster until populous cities are reduced to ruin and desolation. Even now he is at work, in accidents and calamities by sea and by land, in great conflagrations, in fierce tornadoes and terrific hailstorms, in tempests, floods, cyclones, tidal waves, and earthquakes, in every place and in a thousand forms, Satan is exercising his power. He sweeps away the ripening harvest, and famine and distress follow. He imparts to the air a deadly taint, and thousands perish by the pestilence. These visitations are to become more and more frequent and disastrous. Destruction will be upon both man and beast. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The haughty people do languish. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Great Controversy, page 589. This is Keep the Faith Ministry News. Thank you for watching.